Here's another uh, prisoner, uh, Palestinian prisoner, never gets mentioned in the Western media. His name is uh, Walid Daqqa. He's 61 years old. He has uh, bone marrow cancer, and he was just transferred to an intensive care unit in, um, uh, I think it was Rem uh, Remle Prison, which is, it's not really, you know, a hospital. The Israelis are practicing something which is called intentional medical negligence. It's like when you see someone needs help, and you just leave them there to die. You know, that, that's, that's one way that the Israelis kill uh, Palestinian resistance fighters and Palestinians in general. You know, this is something we've seen a million times in Jenny refugee camp. They have raided it and then they blocked the ambulances. Like, I literally showed you the video of them blocking the ambulance from reaching Palestinians. It's intentional medical negligence. Basically decided the Israelis, right? They've, they've decided to postpone a parole committee to review the possible early re uh, release of uh, terminally ill Palestinian prisoner Walid Daqqa. He's actually already done his time, right? They gave him 37 years. He already did the 37 years, and now they still won't release him. And even though he has cancer. And he had a stroke. The court session to review, um, uh, to review this uh, was postponed till May 31st. So that's actually today. We'll see if they go through with it. But this was published six days ago. Um... Uh, Daqqa suffers from an advanced stage of bone marrow cancer, and he was transferred, uh, as I told you guys, um, uh, to the intensive care unit. It's actually uh, at a different um, place. It's Asaf um, Harofi Hospital, south of Tel Aviv, right? So people are going to uh, take him to the street, and and um, they they were holding vigils and and protesting for him in the last couple of days. He was imprisoned in um, 1986 by the Israelis for being involved in the killing of an Israeli soldier and given 37 years, which he completed in March 2023. But Israeli authorities extended his sentence by two years in 2017 over charges of smuggling cell phones into prison. Walid Daqqa uh, may lose his life. Uh, his health is in grave danger. He cannot walk or uh, talk properly. He also cannot breathe normally. He's on a respirator. So that's according to Domir. Uh, Domir is, is, a, is an organization that advocates for, for Palestinian prisoners, right? They're very, very big. Uh, Domir also said that uh, uh, Walid Daqqa has completed his 37-year sentence. He's not someone who is on a security file anymore. He must be able to continue treatment outside of prison among his family because even if he is released, it's not clear how long he will live. And they've been also meeting with diplomats uh, to, to pressure their governments for his release. So on April 12th, um, he, went a he, he underwent uh, surgery to remove a large portion of his right lung. And, and that's when he was placed in, in, in the Ramle uh, Clinic, which is, you know, notoriously uh, horrendous. And, uh, you know, you, you, you wouldn't put anyone, anyone who's, you know, a little bit sick there. Never mind someone who's just had part of their right lung removed. So just if, if you've lost count, this guy has bone marrow cancer. They removed part of his lung and he also had a stroke. And he, they still won't release him from prison, even though he completed his sentence. I mean, that is the definition of evil and cruelty. You know, I've never seen anything so, so, so barbaric. Ben Gavir, who you all know is, is Israel's uh, security minister. You know, the one, the one who likes setting up... Uh, off, you know, tent offices in Sheikh Jarrah so that um, he can bring security along with him, right? And then give immunity for Israelis to kind of like, you know, uh, uh, chant uh, at Palestinians to leave their houses, right? Really, really nice guy. So he said that in a tweet that Daqqa should end his life in prison. A very merciful and reasonable man. Yes. Famous Ben Gavir. <laughs> Christ. So he's been complaining here, Walid Daqqa. He's been complaining about health problems since 2015. And, you know, they just kind of ignored him. And uh, it, it's just gone worse and worse and worse. And they, they won't do anything about it. In mid-February, Daqqa suffered a severe stroke. Despite requiring emergency treatment, he was only transferred to hospital 11 days later. During that time, he lost 10 kilograms at least in, in a month and a half and a significant amount of blood. So he had a stroke and they wouldn't take him to hospital for 11 days. You know, usually when someone has a stroke, you're like rushing, you're in a, literally in a race against time to get them to hospital. That's like, the, you know, you're, you're just, because the, the sooner, the faster you get them to hospital, the better it is, you know. Um, uh, they can, 
hopefully retain some of their motor skills and, and so on, right? You're, you're literally in a race against time. It's like having a heart attack. You're in a race against time. Get them to the, to the medics. And they just leave him for 11 fucking days in prison. I mean, once again, this is the definition of evil. Uh, uh, you know, Israel is, is who, who, can, who would do this? You know, who, who would do this to another human being? You, you wouldn't do that to, to, you know, a fucking Nazi. Uh, e e even the German prisoners of war, you had to respect the Geneva Convention, even though they're, they're Nazis. You know, why, why do the Israelis do this to uh, a 61-year-old man who's supposed to be out, out of jail? You know, it, it's disgusting. It's really disgusting behavior. There's no excuse for this. And let me show you another thing. In 1999, Walid Daka got married while behind bars. He and his wife welcomed their daughter, um, her name is Milad, in 2020, conceived after his sperm was smuggled out of prison. So he had to smuggle, or his wife had to smuggle his sperm out of prison just to have a child because they won't let him out. Walid is one of 23 prisoners who are being held in Israeli prisons in violation of the 1993 Oslo Accords, which stipulated that all Palestinian prisoners detained prior to the signing of the agreement would be released. It's kind of like the um, Good Friday Agreement. You know, you know, we agreed that any Irish prisoners would be released from British jails, e even if uh, you had guys who were serving 11 life sentences, right? Doesn't matter. Sign the agreement, you release them. Here, the Israelis just like, no, fuck it. Screw, screw the agreement. We're just going to keep them in jail. I really don't know what to say after this because I feel like I, I shouldn't have to say anything. The, 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 you know, the situation speaks for itself. This is exactly why you cannot reason or, or, you know, do any diplomacy with the Israelis because they break, they go back on their word. They don't respect um, their own agreements, which they signed, including the Oslo Accords, which shows you that any form of you know, diplomacy with the Israelis will only get you screwed. I mean, we're in 2023, you know, like, <laughs> you know, we're decades later, three decades later. What, what has changed for the Palestinian case? What has changed for Palestine? What has changed for, uh, you know, the, the ambition of having a Palestinian state? Or just even forget the Palestinian state for one moment. Even the, the agreement to just release the prisoners, they won't respect that. How the hell are you going to get a country from these people, right? You're, even the concept that, oh, we should beg them to give, give us a country. Or, you know, the Palestinians, in, in their case, they have to beg for uh, the, you know, the Israeli white Europeans to give them a country. I mean, this concept is, is, is insane. Going back to my points, this shows you you cannot do uh, any form of diplomacy with the Israelis because they, they, they spit on diplomacy. They, they uh, uh, you know, they kick you while you're down and they don't respect their own agreements. They go back on their word. Um, you know, number two, uh, uh, this shows you that they have no respect for human rights. You know, even if you're in a, uh, like I said, you're in a situation of, 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 um, of conflict, of war, even when you have prisoners, you treat them with some dignity, right? Geneva Convention or, or no Geneva, Geneva Convention. You, you, you as, they're human, as human beings, you give them basic medical treatment, some food. I don't have to explain this, right? It's just basic common decency and, and just giving them their dignity. No dignity. No dignity. No, no medical treatment. Nothing. Screw you, screw you, screw you. Um, you know, if you're, if you're Palestinian and you're looking at this, I mean, what do you do? What do you do? You just, you just let the Israelis stamp on you? You just let the Israelis, you know, kick you around and treat you like crap and murder your, your senior citizens? 37 years. Jesus Christ, you think he's a serial killer or something? I mentioned Geneva Convention. If you go read Geneva, the Geneva Convention, you read uh, the UN Charter. When someone invades your country, uh, you're allowed to do anything, anything under the sun to liberate your country. And that's a concept that we understand when it comes to Ukrainians. We give them weapons, actually. right? We arm them and we, we allow them to uh, send drones to attack the Kremlin because we are so supportive of their right to resist. Well, where, where's his right? Where's Walid Daqqa's right to resist? He killed an Israeli soldier? What the fuck was the Israeli soldier doing on his land? Why, does it, why wasn't the Israeli soldier at home? For, you know, why, why, why was he invading his country? Would you give a Ukrainian 37 years for killing a Russian soldier? In the West, we would applaud them and give them you know, book deals and interviews. I mean, th th this is... Look at this double standard. Even if you disagree with what he did, this guy, you know, he has a stroke and you leave him there for 11 days. What is this? There, you know, there has to be, in, in any real, a real judiciary, 
uh, there has to be some form of leniency, of mercy. This is not, not only is there a lack of mercy or leniency in the Israeli so-called judiciary, it is the opposite. It, there, there is an excess, there, there is a, a, a gluttonous excess of violence and, and bloodlust and, and just, you know, evil. This is evil. I'm sorry, the way that this man has been treated is the definition of evil and hell. You know, I forgot to mention uh, when I was talking about uh, Walid Daqqa that another Palestinian prisoner died just a few weeks ago, right? Uh, Khudr Adnan was his name. He was also, you know, uh, in Israeli prisons for a long time. He had spent about, I think, eight years, you know, with this administrative detention where he wasn't actually ever charged with anything or, or convicted of anything, but just brought in and in and out of prison, never told why. And yeah, he, he died. Um, and once again, you have this Israeli practice of intentional, so they do it on purpose, intentional medical negligence, where you, you, you leave someone to die, you put them in such conditions that they, they, they develop diseases or injuries, and then you don't cure them or, or treat them in any capacity, and then they die. You know, it's, it's, it's really murder by another by another name it's murder by another name and they've done this to khudr adnan they've done this to so 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 many palestinian uh, uh prisoners and uh walid daqa is you know even if they released him now i it's really sad you know uh, you have no idea how long he will live and they don't talk about him in, in in the media and uh you know there's a blackout in the west you won't most people won't even know his name because you know we can't talk about uh israeli crimes we can't uh, talk about israeli abuses of human rights i mean come on get real do you actually care about human rights or is it just a badge you like flashing in people's faces to to bomb them